This is a big one. Our good friend and co-collaborator is Mr. Paul Third. Do you know Paul Third? Do you know his YouTube channel? Please go and follow it. Paul is a badass, as they would say. No, they say badass. Paul's great. His channel's fantastic. He tests every plugin to within an inch of its life. The great thing about guys like Paul is he can find out why something does or doesn't sound good. That's why I became friends with Julian Krauser, because Julian tested a unit I hated. Somebody sent me a unit to review, and I couldn't review it because it was so bad. And I couldn't understand why it was so bad, and it was expensive. And then I went online, because they didn't, they didn't, it wasn't a paid thing or anything like that. It was just like, hey, test this thing out. And I was like, I'm not in the business of just like trashing a product for the sake of it. I highlight the things I like and ignore the things I don't. Simple as that. I don't like it. I'm not going to talk about it. And I hate it when people have, a, have an opinion on a piece of equipment that they have never used because they read it in a forum. I heard this and I heard that. Well, did you hear it with your ears or did you hear somebody talk about it? That's a big deal for me. So anyway, so I got to try this unit, didn't like it, went to Julian Krause's site be, accidentally because I typed in the unit online and he did a review on it and spec'd it out properly. Well, Paul and Julian are unique in our business. They're both great guys. And Paul and Julian go in and review stuff based on all of the technical aspects. And I know lots of people like that stuff. Um, link to Paul's channel. Can you put the channel up? Link up. It's Paul Third. He actually, if you go to Produce Like a Pro, our channel, we have all of our link channels, all the people we work with closely. All right. So Paul says, giving myself deadlines for most most recent mixes. So this is around the second second day to complete. Just whenever I have some spare time, trying to get myself to the stage where I feel comfortable to the point where I can start approaching artists for paid work or actually offering paid work, period. We need to get, get Paul some work, all of us. Let's help him out and let's help each other out. <laughs> Planning on mixing as many plat multi tracks as I can in order to see where I'm headed to improve with each mix. So anybody interested in my mixing approach, I'm, I've been consuming myself at Spike Stent's work recently. Spike is in my top two mixers of all time. Top three. And you all know who the top three are. Spike is unbelievable. I love Mark Ended. I love Spike. And I am a huge fan of Chad, uh, Chad Blake's work. Um, they're all, those three guys are unfricking believable, unbelievable. And each one of them have delivered stuff that I've worked on, which has just blown me away. So I have personal, you know, I've had everybody you can think of mix our stuff and those three guys unfricking believable, you know, and I'm not ignoring Bob Clear Mountain. Bob Clear Mountain is the one we all look up to. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't talk about that. Listen to the biggest tracks on Spotify players. I made an opportunity listening in the car and just whenever I can. Not trying to be him, but I've really been using work as a reference as I love to a tight low end of all his mixes and how amazing consistency across an entire career. Plus he's from the UK and has a hand in almost mostly every big UK artist. I don't reference while mixing as I want to make my own decisions and go with my gut in the mix and I usually spend 10 or 15 minutes listening to some of his work in a similar genre before mixing just to Chew, kind of chew my ears before letting myself loose. Haha. -ha. Also, massive thanks for Warren to allow allowing me to share with the community. Fantastically.
pretty darn good, Paul. Very, very creative. Um, Chris was mentioning something about the low end. It's super tight. I love what you're doing. It is really, really tight. But with the without the extended low lows on the kick, it makes me, as Chris said, makes me want you to um, to high pass the um, bass a little bit more, just so the kick can breathe a bit more. I, and that's one solution if you want to keep it that tight and not have kind of the the, the forty hertz kind of kind of enforcement behind the fifty sixty on the kick. Personally, you know, I use the subharmonic synthesizer and I put a little bit of thirty six hertz, which is basically forty, under there just going, and it's just a little bit. I would want to hear a little bit more extended low end just on the kick drum, just on the bass drum itself. That would be my first thing. The second thing is. Um, is is when the guitars come in on the chorus, especially at first, I need a bit more three to five k in there. I need a bit more, a bit more like excitement. They come in and they're they're definitely filling things out. Um, and there was a period, for instance, of the nineties, the very late nineties and early two thousands, where like a lot of the sort of generic emo rock that was coming in was like pretend heavy. It was like the guitars never got really forward. They would just kind of go, and they would sort of just add the energy. So I think that there's a bit of that going on here. And I don't mean it in a negative way. I think that the heavy guitars come in on the chorus and they don't take it to like, at all, which is not what this is about. This band is definitely more of um, Kings of Leon for a start. But I do think a little bit more energy in the 3 to 5K range. They wouldn't have to come up in volume, really, because the 3 to 5K is where our ears are really super sensitive. I just think a bit of bite on that left and right guitar and the choruses will add to the energy, add to the excitement. So for me, those are the two main things. A little bit more low lows on the kick. You could argue that the snare at times feel like it's about a dB, dB and a half too loud. It's definitely in your face. My guess is, is the mastering engineer would probably apply a bit more compression on the overall mix and then probably a little bit of limiting just to shave the very top snap off of that snare. Um, but in all the positiveness in this is I love the vocal treatment. Absolutely love it. And I think when, just for people that maybe aren't familiar with Spike's Stent, what Paul is talking about is Spike's creativity. Spike is one, if not the, with him and Chad Blake... Those guys know how to screw it up, for want of a better word, in a really, really interesting way. When Spike mixed a couple of songs for me on the Vedera record, he took what Mark Ender had already brilliantly done and just messed it up a bit and made it super, super exciting. I often say to older pop artists that maybe have had a legacy career, when they say who should mix my stuff, I always say Spike, because you will bring an energy and a twist that will make it sound fresh and current. He's really, really amazing at that. And he works with, obviously, teenage, fresh artists off the boat, first album all the way through to legacy artists that have been making records for 40 or 50 years. And he brings that energy, that twist. And that's why I'm pretty darn sure that Paul is a fan of him and why so many of us are fans of him. So he's definitely worth studying, and I can tell that Paul has done that because what he's done is he's done interesting vocal transitions, interesting ideas where the chorus vocal sounds completely different to the verse. This is a very, very great, huge lesson in learning some techniques based off of, of great mixers such as Spike Stead. But again, for me, Paul, it's that extended low end on the kick. I just want it underneath just a little bit. Tucking down the snare just a little bit in places. It just feels like it's fish tailing a little bit out of that you know maybe you could put five percent more saturation on it just to wind down some of the transits but it's fat it's a fantastic snare sound it's really good um and then those guitars in the choruses a bit more when they come in left and right a bit more three to five k just a bit more edge to them so they just feel a little bit more angry so it's just a little bit more exciting i like what like i said before i like that you've got them kind of in that that kind of world of not being metal, so they didn't come up two or three dB more, so suddenly like Whoa, like this. I think you're doing the right thing because it is a Kings of Leon style thing, um, but just a bit more edge to them, and that will obviously make them perceivably louder because that's where once again our ears are most sensitive. Great mix, great thinking, and a great lesson for us all to listen to inspiring mixers like Spike Stent. Thank you very much. All right.